Just to let you know, timestamps are found in the description. This is a Mudmaster. No, 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 this one is a Mudmaster. No, this one's a Mudmaster. No, this is a Mudmaster. No, this is a Mudmaster. Mudmaster, Mudmaster, Mudmaster. This one, this one, this one. Well, here is my Mudmaster, and this is the version I decided to go for. Reason being is that it has a lot of functionality. This does have a quad sensor, so it has all your ABC with your temperature, but it also can track your steps. But it also has some clever quirks, meaning that this can communicate with your device and navigate to your starting position. Now, is it a true master of G? Well, for functionality, I would say 100% yes it is. On the build side, I would say this is extremely well built compared to say the master of G like I have on this rangeman here, you are getting just a little bit extra. I mean, you're getting the hardened sapphire and you're getting the ceramic case back. You've got carbon insert in the strap and you also get metal shafts with metal buttons. Just has that little bit more refinement. And there is the cost. Well, strip that away a little bit and you have something like this. I mean, it has metal buttons, but that's going straight into the case. The only metal shaft is on the connection button here. But apart from that, it has upgraded to the carbon on the front there on the bezel and a lovely solid case back like that. The one downside I keep reading about is that it's not solar powered and atomic. Well, is that a bad thing? Let me just explain something. If you are in the northern hemisphere, solar power is pretty useless in the dark. So you've got a peace of mind of two year battery worth to keep you going. And I've spoken to Watcho about the replacement of the battery and they're getting a rough cost of about 30 pounds. And this is replacing the gasket as well. So here's a size comparison next to my Golf Master. And you can see they're rough about the same size but when put together the Mudmaster is the clear winner at being the slightly fatter one but I have to add when it's on your wrist you don't feel this because weighing at 92 grams it isn't top heavy now I've had this Mudmaster for nearly a week and I am absolutely impressed with it and I've worn it every day since I got it as well because it's just so light on the wrist. I also like looking at it as well because it's just so, it's just so rugged looking as well, especially with the big bumpers at the top there and that carbon fiber insert. But before I go too far into the depth of detail, I'd just like to point out that I believe this is sort of a more more of a grown up G-Shock. Let me sort of explain using my Mudman. Now on the dial and on the bezel, there is a lot of information, especially with regards to the buttons. Not only is it written on the bezel, it's also written on the crystal. Also, you have like the twin sensor up there, the water resistance, it's telling you the world time, and it's telling you it's tough solar. I mean, once you understand this watch and got used to where the buttons are, this remains where it is. And for me, I just feel like there's just too much information. Whereas on the Mudmaster, it's not like you're carrying an instruction manual on your wrist. They've kept it very to the point and just showing the information that's needed, like the compass, the connect button, the altimeter. Whereas these two buttons here have nothing, nothing is written. They are trusting you to learn this. And also for the dial, they don't need to advertise that it's Bluetooth or it's not solar powered. And we know G-Shocks are 200 meters of water resistance. We just want the facts for the functions. That's all we need. Maybe adding sensor wasn't needed, but hey, to me, this is like, 
the grown-up of G-Shocks and this is the step in the right direction G-Shock. Really am impressed. Advertised it's G-Shock because we're proud of wearing these and I like that you haven't used protection because it's not condoms. You actually use mud resistance and you use shock resist which I prefer over protection. This is more information I like just to remind me that I can smash it into mud. Where do I begin? Well, firstly, I should mention that this uses a hardened mineral domed crystal. Look at that. Domed on a G-Shock. That is very interesting. And why would you have domed? This has the AR coated sapphire crystal, but you can see there is actually a reflection in the background. Whereas on the Mudmaster, there is nothing. It's only when you tilt it that you get the light in the background. Otherwise, when it's facing towards you, it just looks like there is actually no crystal whatsoever. So there is the reason why they've chosen domed. Okay, let's go a little bit more into the detail and starting off with the hands, especially with the second hand. I like how it's like an arrow with a feathered tip on the end there and it's yellow all the way through and then tipped off with the white. And this is loom. I will do a loom shot in a moment. And then I like the hands, very simple and they're sort of sword-like. And again, this is all loomed. Now the markers on the edge here, these do cascade down from the chapter ring down onto the dial to give it really nice depth. And at the very top, they're tipped with loom. And as you can see in the loom shot, it's a glowing all of them. And look at the loom on the end of the second hand. Just to mention, the minute hand moves every 10 seconds. So that is six times in one minute. And I like the fact that they haven't chopped the numbers. And through the middle, there's this bar and it has quad sensor there, just to remind you. And then it has Mudmaster and Casio, keeping it nice and simple. And then on the top part of this, this part here is all to do with the indicator and this is something I will be doing a tutorial on. But this is broken down into degrees here. So that would be 60 degrees. You have a 45 degree one there. And I like that that is actually angled and facing towards you like a chalk. And then you have the 30 and then you have this marker in the middle there. And this is all very related. So when you see the tutorial on this, you'll see how all this works. And then on the very edge of the chapter ring, it has a minus and plus. And then it has some numbers with one, two, and it goes all the way around over to over or under. And this is all related either to the altimeter or the barometer, which I will show you. And then it has an R down here, and this is to do with the Bluetooth, and this means ready. And then you have a C on the opposite side, and this means connected. And then either side of the digital display, you have these little lines here. Now there's seven of them, and remember that. And when I show you how the altimeter works, then you'll understand. The display is negative, and I must say that it's sort of a brass sort of color. It's not gold and it's not white. And uh, I have to say that it does match the button here. Being that it's an important button on this watch, I like that the fact they've highlighted it like that and also it just adds a little bit more detail. Now the display is a very fine dot matrix. There's some very, very fine lines in that and it's all relevant when I go through the tutorial because there's a lot of information that is displayed here. Now for the bezel and this is carbon fiber. Now I have to be honest, when I was looking on the internet, this looked like it was actually a print, but it's not. You can see that there is a resin over the top and then you can see the carbon fiber weave underneath. It really does look good in the hand. And it sort of has a sheen to it. It's not gloss. 
it's not matte it's somewhere in between it's a very impressive finish I like the fact that this isn't just print this is actually engraved into the bezel and then you have five protection bumpers that go around the bezel including the sensor that is also a protection bumper and that these screws are real screws going through the protection bumper into the bezel that fixes to the case so these aren't fake screws and on the sensor side this is fixed in with two phillip head screws and these are stainless steel color whereas on the screws on the bezel these are sort of like they're plated a little bit darker they're not black and they're sort of maybe a little bit gun metal there is some extra protection here raised up where the button is and on this other button here you can see that also has a little bit of raised addition there the actual sensor here i believe is plastic but it does have that sort of anodized finish so maybe it is silver underneath with a clear coating of red but it does look good you can see the bumper protection here is actually going all the way down it's covering the side of the case now getting onto the case this is the carbon core guard and the weave on there is brilliant it's very much like the finish on the luminox and this material as we know is very hard indeed in fact it's harder than steel it uses all metal buttons but earlier i mentioned about the rangeman having metal shafts and this doesn't but then i can understand that being that the carbon guard here is actually stronger than steel so i shall forgive that and then on the connect button as mentioned this does have a metal shaft and the button is quite flush to the top there so you don't accidentally press it and i like the little bit of detail there with the red and there is the brass button on the compass and these do turn and they do have a little bit of wobbliness now this is all part of the shock protection because if that was stiff and you knocked it then you could break it so that is very normal if you have wobbly buttons and you can see the carbon bezel is sandwiched between the carbon case and then it has this backing plate so let's have a look at the back and the case back reminds me of a turtle much like one of the ninja turtles it really does add protection now underneath there is a metal plate and it is fixed in with screws and this is repeated either side so four in total there it is advertised in the middle with the logo of carbon core guard and then you've got some casio information up here maybe that's to do with the bluetooth then there's some serial numbers there and then another sort of number here and at the bottom there it is there's the model number there is the module number and that is the only place it has bluetooth which i like it is a japanese movement and it is cased in thailand so possibly the whole watch is made in japan i like that they add a little bit more detail here just to protect those buttons now talking of the buttons they do sit very low to the bottom so it's really giving it the maximum of protection so i really do like how it's very sandwiched and protected it really does have a compact look when it's all covered in mud this is going to be a lot easier to clean and you wouldn't have all the scratches on the back if it was all metal on the gravity master version the back case is more exposed but then again that is more for a different reason whereas this g-shock is made for the more rugged and made for the more dirtier users like myself and then either end of the strap it has these protectors here now these are separate and i think this is to keep the curve in the strap because this is all part of the protection especially if you drop it the strap is secured with these hex head screws there they're repeated all the way around so there's four of those and they go all the way through the strap and there is a couple of pins as well just to really keep it secure now it does have a little groove in there so this sits a little bit more flush i like that bit of detail there and the texture on there look at that it's like a tire now this is because when it's wet and say you have to wash it or whatever and you're taking off and you have wet fingers then you have maximum grip it does have a resin keeper which is very unusual but i like it because when you knock it it doesn't make that loud metal noise 
I like the fact that they've used a traditional buckle, keeping it very, very thin, and it does have the drilled out parts there, so you can remove it if you want to replace the keeper, and then it is made in Thailand underneath, and that's all in stainless steel. On the other side of the strap, you do have a little bit of information, don't see the point of this, but it's just to express that it does have the ABC and it is 200 meters of water resistant. Then you have the adjustment holes and this is used as ventilation, I'm sure. And then it has a nice little channel down there just to keep it really aired on your wrist. There is a little bit of tapering on the strap there. It's very marginal, but you can see it. And just to add that the end of the strap, it has this little bit of a bulge there and that is just to keep the keeper in place. Well, that was quite wordy, but I have to say that because this is resin, it actually does fit better than it would if it was, say, made of stainless steel. And if you pull it down just to that point there, it does keep it quite firm. And I know for some G-Shock users, this is a struggle because it always seems to want to pop out. So, Good thinking there, G-Shock. In my unboxing video, I did do all the measurements and the weight, but I didn't measure the lug to lug correctly. So there it is, 68.6. .6, and that is taken from these two points here. And that is very crucial to make sure that this watch does fit your wrist. Okay, we've seen enough of the watch. Let's get into the actual module. Now I'm gonna break this down into two parts. The first part is all going to be about the watch. And then the second part is gonna be about the connectivity and then some testing. In my previous videos, I relate to the buttons as A, B, C, and D. Where is in the manual, it is listed as A, B, C, D, E, and this button as L. So that's gonna be a little bit confusing for me, especially because I'm dyslexic. So I'm gonna call this the adjust button, this the compass button, connect, altimeter button, this is gonna be the backlight button, and that's going to be the mode button. So I know where I am, so you can follow easier. Let's start off with the backlight, because this is absolutely phenomenal. Look at that. You could actually use that as a torch. That is so bright. And all this for one LED that's in the six o'clock position. And I have to say that it is so perfectly positioned and so bright that they haven't had to put an extra backlight LED where the display is. And that is genius, especially when this is all battery operated. You wanna be aware of those battery reserves. The backlight does have auto backlight. So what you do, you press the backlight button for about three or so seconds. You hold it in and then at the bottom, it comes up with LT there. Well, just by the second hand, thank you very much. So when you flip the wrist, the backlight will come on. So let's give you a demonstration. There it is. So it has to be at that angle like so. It won't work if you twist from there to there or go backwards. And this will continue for six hours. And if you don't want to have it for so long, then you just press the backlight for those three or so seconds and then it turns it off. And good timing second hand, you've just covered it and then the LT goes off. Three to four seconds. Just to add that the LT can only be switched on when it's in home time. It won't work in any other mode. Okay, the next feature I wanna show you is hand shift. So basically you can shift the hands out of the way. Now, it depends what time of day it is because the hands could end up over here or over there. And uh, I think this is to do with being in the shortest distance. Anyway, this is how you do it. You push the light button and you press mode. So just the light button and then mode, it does a little chirp and then the hands will rest in this position here. And on the display, it will come up with HND and that will flash just to let you know the hands are out the way. Now, if you do nothing, it will just hold this position for one hour, but you can just repeat it by pressing the light, the backlight, and the mode button together and it will unshift. So let's give that a push, a little chirp, and then they go back like that. And while it's moving, you can 
press again and it will shift back so you don't have to wait. Just like to add that if you're using the adjustment side, say for the alarm or the timer, the hands will automatically shift and you can undo this by pressing the backlight and the mode if you want the time to be displayed while you're adjusting. Now this is in home time mode with the ticking second hand showing the date there in the digital display and it's showing day of the week, showing the month and the date and you can change this. Now this is a bit of a quirk in the watch and it does have more, but I'm just gonna show you what the watch has before I go further later in the video. So by pressing the adjustment button up here once, I now have the barometer trend here. And this is showing 20 hours worth of the graph and note that it does keep the date there pressing the adjustment button again. I now have the time with the ticking seconds. And if I press again, I have a step counter and this is part of that quad sensor side. Yes, very lazy at 41 steps today. And then pressing again, it just cycles through. So it's back at the date. Next, I wanna show you the adjustment side and this is broken down into three parts. The first part will adjust features in the watch the second part will adjust time and date, and then the third part will do a hand calibration. So to get into the first part of the adjustment, you need to press the adjustment button for a few seconds, and on the display, it will come up with set, and it will also shift the hands, and with a beep as well. So watch this, comes up with set, makes a beep, release and then the hands will go into the position there and so the first one is the home city where you are located and it doesn't have city codes it actually does write the full city there and you can see london scrolling now you can use the compass button and the altimeter button to scroll and if i press the altimeter button this is going to go eastly so that's going towards australia and if you press the compass button, it's gonna go westly like so. You can do a long press and it will advance like that. And you get 38 of these cities that are built into the watch. Just like to add that when it's connected to the app, you get over 300. Well, we'll get back to that in a moment. So pressing the altimeter button, I want to go forwards because I need to show you how I'm gonna set this up now because I'm based in London. I will choose London, and once you're happy, you press the mode button, and that will go to another side of the adjustment feature. And this is the daylight saving time. At the moment, that's set on auto. Using the altimeter button, I can either have that off, or I can have it permanently on. And just to show you, when it is on, you will have the DST shown in the corner there. And at the moment, when it's on auto, we aren't in daylight saving time, so it'll be switched off. So once you have that set, you press the mode, it goes on to the next one. This is the key tones. This is basically when you push the buttons, it makes the beep. So pressing the altimeter button, you can mute it or you can have it with tone. Just to note that when it's on mute, there is nothing on the display to say it's muted. Well, I think pushing the buttons will be enough when they don't make a noise. So from the key tone, pressing the mode, we go to the light. Now you can adjust the light duration. You can either have one, which is one and a half seconds, pressing the altimeter button. You have the choice with three seconds. Let me give you a demonstration. That's on one, press it, one and a bit, one and a little bit. Now if I go to three, you can see one, two, three. And because this is using the app and I can adjust the alarms at night using the app, I think one and a half seconds is plenty for me. So moving on is the 24 hour with the possibility using the altimeter button to have 12 hours. And when you have the 12, you'll have a little P in the corner there. No, don't need to get that excited. So from 24, 12 hour, 
Moving on, pressing the mode button, we have RCV. This is receive, and this is to do with the Bluetooth connection that updates the time. This is syncing with the device. Now it will sync four times a day, and it will start from 0, 0, 30 hours, and it will go every six hours, four times a day, keeping it very accurate. Now, because I'm using the app a little bit, you know, maybe every day or every other day, every time you make the connection, it's automatically going to sync it with the watch, the time you have on the device. So moving on from mode, you have this one. It's called slope, if you saw it. Now this is to do with the step counter and it will use the altimeter to make a better calculation on your steps. As I'm not really into the steps, I chose to have this off. But if you use the altimeter button, you can turn this on if you just want more accuracy on that side. And then pressing the mode button, it takes you to unit. So the first unit is measuring the altitude and that is a little flashing M for meters. Pressing the altimeter, you can shift that to feet. So you just get feet and meters. The next one, pressing mode, takes you to the barometer side. I have this in hectopascals, and if you press the altimeter, you can have inches of mercury. So you have those two. Then pressing the mode button, you can now change the temperature reading, so you can either have it in Celsius, pressing the altimeter will give you Fahrenheit. Then pressing the mode button, takes you to your home city. <laughs> so that's the first part of the adjustment. If you press the adjust button again, you now can adjust the time. Starts off with the flashing seconds. You can adjust this using the altimeter button. If I was to push that now, that will zero it off. And if it's over 30 seconds, it will notch the minute. So I'll just give you an example. If I push that now, you see that goes to zero, zero, and it's notched it up the one minute. Now, if you press the mode button, you can adjust the hours and you can use the altimeter button and the compass button by going up or down. And then pressing the mode button again, you have the minutes to adjust. Then pressing the mode, again, you have the date. So it's flashing with the year. This goes up to 2099. Pressing the mode, you have the month and you have the date. Just to let you know that you can't do the date swap. Here in England, we like to say it's 14th of January, whereas in other parts of the world, they like to say it's January the 14th. So just to let you know that isn't there. So Casio, if you're listening, please make this on every new G-Shock, because us English people do prefer it the other way around. Anyway, pressing the mode button from there, it goes back to the time. Then if you press the adjust button once, just resets, and that is adjustment part one and two. Now for adjustment part three, and this is to hand calibrate. So what you do, it's a long, long, long press on the adjustment button, and it comes up with set, and then keep it pressed, it comes up with H set, which is hand set, and then you can release. So what's being displayed, it's showing sec, with the zero zero so basically this is for adjusting the second hand using the compass button and the altimeter button you can adjust it like so going backwards and then going forwards and you can do a long press and it will do a 360 like that for some reason anyway the object of this game is to get all the hands lined up with 12 so once you've got the second hand lined up then you press the mode button and this will adjust the hour hand and the minute hand. Now on this particular watch, the hour and minute hand are geared up together. They're not individual. So you have to wait for them both to finish stopping. And then I shall show you what happens, which will be quite soon. And I'd just like to add that I would do this before you do anything with the watch, just to make sure everything is calibrated. And as you can see, that is slightly off. And again, using the compass and the altimeter button, you can go backwards. Look, it's very slow like that. Or you can do a long press and it will wind. And you can use the altimeter button to stop it. Or you can use the compass button to stop it. So if you want to go forward like that, it is a lot faster, I noticed. Anyway, let's get it back. 
So a long press, it's doing that automatically, almost there, and I can just stop it. And then just by pressing the compass button going backwards, I can really get that fine tune. So now I have a rocket o'clock and that's all accurate and lined up. I think it is, let's give it one more push. Now that's better, that's perfect. And then once you're happy, you press the adjust button. But if you press the mode, it will go back like this and it will flash through the seconds. And if you press the mode again, it will just notch the minute hand like that. If I press again, you'll see the hand, second hand does a 360 and then it does it like that. And then just press the adjust button when you're finished and then it goes back to home time. Oh, and that's my steps, by the way, it's not broken. So just press the adjust and it goes back to date. And next, I wanna start hitting on the sensors, especially the compass and the altimeter. Now this is all what the watch can do, nothing to do with the connected side. That will come later in the video. And these two here are very cool indeed. And one of the reasons why I went for the Mudmaster. Anyway, so in home time, pressing the compass button just the once, makes a chirp, comes up with comp, and then you can see the compass bearing there. It only works when it's level like that. It has to be horizontal. So the second hand is always gonna be pointing north like that. And as soon as you raise it up, it's, uh, it's gonna go offline just to sort of show you. Now that is showing the bearing, but if you press the adjust button once, you will get the degrees as well. So that is very handy. So you can flip between those two. And the compass will run for 60 seconds continuous. And if you press the compass button just the once, it will refresh for another 60 seconds. Next, I wanna show you how to calibrate the compass. And I would do this every time you use it. And make sure you don't calibrate it near your car or in your car, near a building or anywhere near metal. Make sure you really are out in the open before you do this because digital compasses are really uh, subject to metal and disturbances like that. So what I would do, open the compass like that. Once that's open, press the adjustment button for a few seconds, comes up with set on the display, then the hands will shift. And there is a three part to this and you can choose which one is best for you. The first part is the figure of eight and this is using the step sensor which is built in the watch. Basically you are twisting your wrist like that and doing a figure of eight to calibrate it. The next one by pressing the mode is the two point system and then pressing the mode again, you can do the offset. So you can adjust it to a magnetic north or to a true north. So pressing mode will just cycle through. So let's try the figure of eight just to show you a demonstration. So when it's flashing, you press compass, the figure eight goes solid, and then you do the figure of eight. It makes a chirp, comes up with okay, and then that's calibrated. So the next one, go back into the adjust, pressing the mode is the two point turn. Now you make sure that this compass is absolutely level. It has to be horizontal and you can point it to any direction. So once you've got it level and it's pointed to that direction you want, you press compass, then it says wait, then it says okay, then it says turn 180 degrees. So basically, you turn it around all the way like so. I'm gonna do it this way around so you don't get confused and giddy. And then once you've turned 180 degrees, remember keeping it flat, then press the compass button, then it will come up with weight, and then it will come up with okay. And then it goes back into the compass mode like that. And the next one, just go back to the figure of eight, then pressing the mode, done that one then you have this one here. And you can use the compass button and the altimeter to either go west with the degrees or go back to the east side. And if you feel like you need to reset that to factory, then just press the compass button and the altimeter button together, comes up with off, and then that's set at factory and it will start off at zero. So basically this is a magnetic north. You can do hand shift at this point, pressing the light and the backlight, and that will shift the hands like so. 
and then the hand second hand notice that it did stop for a moment this is just because of the hands moving it can't do everything come on give it a break just like to point out that if the flashing is there that's because you either started the compass at that angle you've got to start it when it's horizontal or it needs calibration so if i just level that off press the compass and then put it back up you can see that it's still flashing so what I need to do is go back into the adjustment and I need to either set this here or I do the two point turn now I prefer to do it this way so let's just do that and get that set okay and it's telling me to turn 180 it makes a chirp that's all perfect and now it should see it is not flashing get those hands out of the way there we go nice and slow and then the second hand kicks off so next i want to cover the altimeter so in home time press the altimeter button once it comes up with alti and then you'll have some readings here so let me explain what's actually going on here you'll have a graph here shown and remember the lines i mentioned here at the beginning there's seven of them well each of those lines is actually 10 meters and so that will measure 70 meters at once and then on this side you'll have your altitude reading and then the second hand is in this position now this is a difference indicator and i will come back to that but at the moment it's sitting at three o'clock which is zero if you remember you've got the plus and the minus there so you can have an incline or a decline so i will come back to that so pressing the adjust button once you will have a full graph here and I will put this in the pressure pot and give you an example of what it actually looks like going up and down. And pressing the adjust button returns you back to the reading and you can go in and out as many times as you like. There is some adjustment, so it's just a long press on the adjust button, it comes up with set and here you can change the value and see the hands automatically sweep out the way. And here you can use the compass button and the altimeter button to increase and to decrease like so or with a long press like that or if you want to do a factory reset pressing the compass button the altimeter button together comes up with off there and then you'll have whatever the factory reset is being that they've uh, calibrated this back in thailand then it's going to be completely wrong so i'm going to bring this back up now i know i'm at an altitude of about 99 meters so i'm just going to adjust this now mm, long time okay that's set at 99 now if i press the mode button again i have another option here now i can either opt for five seconds or pressing the altimeter button i can have two minutes basically when you start the altimeter it will make a reading for the first three minutes every second and after it depends what you have this set on so for an example if i have it set on five seconds it will take a reading after those three minutes every second it will go to one hour reading every five seconds so you'll have one hour's worth and then the altimeter will automatically turn off and if i select two minutes I will have a reading after the three minutes of every second it will then read every two minutes for the next 12 hours and then pressing the mode button again you can now change the difference so at the moment this is at 100 meters if I press the altimeter button I can increase it to 1000 meters so let me explain so if it's on 100 meters this will use every one will be used as 10 meters so that will measure up to 100 meters that direction and in a decreasement of 100 into a negative and that side and if i turned it to 1000 meters then every one will become 100 well you get the idea don't you so basically that needle will point will go to a maximum of 1000 meters at a time and as I'm in England and I'm not really in the mountainous area, 100 meters seems to be fine for me. And then pressing the mode, then it comes to the hand difference. Now you can opt if you want the hand to be showing the difference or if you want it to show the seconds. And I like to have the difference. It just gives it a bit more animation as well. 
and then pressing the mode takes you back here. So let me just give you an example. So if I raise this up to say 120 meters, like that, so 120 meters, when I press the adjust button to exit, you'll see that the difference has gone up, which is 10, 20 meters. And if you want to say, for an example, you climb a hill and then you get to the top and say there's a tall tower and you just out of interest want to know how tall it is, you can reset the difference. And this is just a short press on the light button. And then it comes up with diff clear. And there you see the difference is now zeroed off. So now you can climb the tower and see how tall it is without upsetting your altitude there. So if I go back into the adjustment, like so, and then I bring that back down to the 99, like that, and then press adjust, you'll see that the difference has now gone down into a negative. And then just the light button comes up with diff and it clears it like so. Now, I would recommend to calibrate every time you use this because it's using the barometric pressure sensor and uh, of course with weather, it's always messing it up. So once you have it all set, you're ready to go. And another cool feature is that you can actually record the data on here and you can record up to 14 logs. So while you have it running like this, you just press the altimeter button with a little longer press and it comes up with rec and then you makes a beep and then you release and this stores it in the watch. Now when it's connected to the device, it will also transfer that data to the device, which is really cool. So I will be going through this in a little bit more detail, but what I really like is when you're in the home time and you want to start the altimeter and you have it all calibrated, just a long press on the altimeter and it goes straight into record. This is great when you want to make a timestamp feature in the altimeter reading. And just to add, while in the altimeter, taking the measurement through the graph there, especially when it's on the longer graph, if you exit the altimeter and then go back into the altimeter, it will reset or refresh the graph like that. And also you can refresh it at any point just by a press of that. And then it will start a more accurate calibration for the first three minutes every second. And then it goes into the initial time that you've set, either five seconds or every two minutes. Next, I wanna cover the modes. So I thought from home time, I'll just quickly go through the modes to give you an idea what's in there. So let's go. Barometer, temperature, record, sunrise, sunset, stopwatch, timer, alarm, you have world time, and then time, which means home time. Okay, let's start off with the very first one in the mode, and this is barometer, and it comes up with burrow in the display there. I really do find this sensor side of the ABC functions to be the most accurate, and uh, kicking off here, you have a graph, and this is a trend in the weather and at the moment it's going up which is a good sign and this is a recording over 20 hours and there is my pressure there which is in hectopascals and it's using the second hand here like it did in the altimeter with a difference now if it goes up this end that means it's good and if it goes down hmm, that's not so good the only time this really works the best is when you are more stationary. So if you're climbing up in the hills or into the mountains, then you're gonna have different air pressures because of the different weathers up there, and then you're gonna get some false readings. So I wouldn't use the difference in that case. Once you start the barometer, it will take an automatic reading every five seconds over the first three minutes and then over a course of one hour every two minutes, and then it would automatically return back to the timekeeping. You can press the altimeter once, and this will refresh, and then start a reading every five seconds over three minutes. By pressing the adjust button here, you can extend the graph here, and this extends it from 20 hours to a whopping 56 hours. Not even my rangeman goes up to 56 hours. And then pressing the adjust button returns back to the value and say you can keep pressing 
the adjust button for the foregraph on back to the value as many times as you like. Now it does do something else which is a massive quirk. If you press the compass button for a few seconds it brings you to another graph and now it goes into a positive. Now I have 20 minutes worth of graph instead of 20 hours and this will take a reading every two minutes. Now this graph in this state will stay like this for 24 hours and then it will return back to the original graph of 20 hours up to 56 hours. And again, you can press the adjust button and get a full graph and this is giving you almost one hour's worth. This is very, very precise indeed and then you come back out. And this is very uh, handy, especially if you're in an area where you think, wow, is the weather really coming in too quick? And this will give you basically like a live update. And I just wanna show you that if I go back into the home time, and then I go through the display, you'll notice that the graph is shown there as the positive with the 20 minutes. And as mentioned, after 24 hours, this graph will return back to the normal 20 hour version. So let me just take that back to the date so I know where I am. So I'm starting the barometer, that will refresh. And the three minutes is lapsed and you can see the graph is really noshing away there. And you can see that the pressure is actually quite stable. But I also noticed that the difference indicator has been going up and down. And uh, this is more to do with when you refresh it. So if I was to come back out, go back to time, and then press the barometer, like so, then this is gonna take a more accurate reading of every five seconds over the first three minutes, as mentioned before. And I'm just keeping an eye on this level here, seeing it go up and down. There it goes, it goes up, and uh, that shows you how sensitive it is. I'd just like to point out that when you exit, it's pressing the compass, comes up with that display there, and you see it comes up with the 2.00, which is every two hours, whereas suppose the other one is two minutes. And then back to the 20 hour graph. Now, if I was to enter back into the 20 minutes, the graph will reset. So I find this very handy indeed. I like the fact that you can reset it so you know exactly where you are. Now there is some adjustment. So by pressing on the adjust button for a few seconds, comes up with set, makes the little beep, the hands adjust. And here you can adjust the value using the compass button, the altimeter button. The altimeter increases and the compass button decreases and you can hold it down like so. And you can also press the compass button and the altimeter button together, and this will make a factory reset We're coming up with off. And I actually find this actually to be the more accurate over the altimeter, mainly because it's using the air pressure side as the barometer, and the altimeter always gets messed up with the weather, as we know. And then pressing the mode button here, you can choose whether you want to show the difference on the hand with the seconds or with the difference, like so and then pressing the mode returns back to the value and then press adjust to exit. The barometer does have a warning feature. Now this is best set when you are stationary. Going up and down the mountain will cause the alarms to go off and uh, will give you a false indication. To enter the barometer sensor warning, it's a long press on the altimeter button while you have the barometer open and then it comes up with info on, makes a chirp, and then leaves the burrow icon there. And this will also be shown when you're in home time, like so. And then when there is a sudden difference in the air temperature, you will get a warning on the display. And you don't have to be in the barometer to see this, which also works when you're in the home time. And this barometer warning will take a reading every two minutes over the next 24 hours, and after that, it will exit automatically. And to turn off, you enter the barometer and then long press on the altimeter, few seconds, info off, and then the borrow icon is removed. Next mode from barometer is the temperature, and then it shows there quickly temp. Now I would recommend to remove the watch off your wrist and let it rest for at least 20 to 30 minutes. 
The reason being is because the sensor is on the back case. Once you open the thermometer, you'll have a reading for every five seconds for the next three minutes and then every two minutes for one hour. And after one hour, it will return automatically back to home time. You can press the altimeter to refresh so it begins another five seconds over three minutes. There is some adjustment, so just pressing the adjust button for a few seconds comes up with set. The hands sweep out the way and now I can make manual adjustments via the compass button or the altimeter button and I can increase or I can decrease and with a long press it advances quickly like that. Or you can press the compass and the altimeter button together and it will return back to factory setting. Then once complete, press the adjust button and then you're back into the temperature mode. From temperature pressing the mode, the next is record and this is to do with the altimeter and you saw earlier when I pressed the altimeter button it recorded and this is where you'll find the information. Now you can press the adjust button just quickly and it will show you which position it is and you can advance using the compass button and the altimeter button. So let's push that again with the adjust. There it is, position one comes up with the date and then it will show you your time with the altitude and it would just rotate like that and flip through. And then pressing the altimeter button, you can advance or you can go back with the compass button. So there's the next one there, which I did the recording of. Then there will show the maximum and again, giving you the date and the time and the altitude. Then pressing the altimeter button again, it will give you the minimum, showing you again the date, the time and the altitude. And then pressing again the altimeter button will give you the ascent. And then pressing again will give you the descent. And then back, goes back to number one. You can delete the logs or you can delete the maximum and the minimum and the descent and ascent. And how you do this, you select which one you want to remove. Say, I want to remove log number two. You press the adjust button just for a little press. It comes up with clear, makes a chirp, and then that's removed. So if I go back to the beginning, you'll see there's one, and then it goes straight into max. Now, if you want to clear all the data, then it's just a matter holding down the adjust button, comes up with clear, then it comes up with all clear, and now everything has been reset. So the maximum as well, you can see it's all reset along with the minimum and the ascending and the descent. Just to let you know, it does hold up to 14 logs, and if you make a 15th log, then it will remove the oldest first. The next mode from record is sunrise and sunset and you saw it come up with sun so it gives you a blast with the date which will be today just waiting for that second hand to move along now the diagram here so when it's in this format that is sunset and then this is sunrise now casio are you listening because i feel like this should be the other way around i think it should be a positive display with the full sun and then negative when it's in that position. I think it's just a bit better on the eye. Anyway, you get the idea. Now you can advance the date using the altimeter button here by pressing it once like that. You can see the date advancing and you can use the compass to go back. So if I just hold my finger down and advance it a little bit longer, maybe we go into February and then when I release, you'll have the different times there for the sunrise and sunset. Now, if I return back to home time and then enter the sunrise and sunset, you'll see that the date has readjusted back to today. And just to let you know, there's no adjustment in this mode. So the next mode from sunset sunrise is the stopwatch. Now this is a 24 hour stopwatch and a simple start stop using the altimeter button like so and then stop and reset is the compass button just to press like that so if i start the stopwatch you can see it's counting one hundredths of a second then it's counting the seconds and then this will be counting the minutes and i hear you thinking where does it count the hours well once it gets to 60 minutes the hundred seconds disappear and that will be replaced by the seconds 
where the seconds is would be the minutes, and where the minutes was would be the hours. I hope you understood that. Now there is a split time, and you can press the compass, and it comes up with SP, where the hundredth second is, and then you have the little icon there flashing. You can stop the stopwatch by pressing the altimeter button, and there you can see the icon has stopped. Then pressing the compass button, you can see your lap time, and then pressing again, it resets it. Okay, next mode from stopwatch, pressing the mode button is timer, TMR, and this is a 24 hour timer. And on factory reset, it always begins with 10 minutes. So to start this, it's again pressing the altimeter button like in the stopwatch, and that starts it. Pressing again, stops it. Pressing the compass button, resets it. To adjust, long press on the adjustment button, comes up with set, and you're able to adjust the minutes. Using the compass button and the altimeter button, you can either advance this, or you can go backwards like that, and then pressing the mode, you can select the hours. So let's have a little test on this and uh, set it for one minute. It can only adjust the minutes and the hour. So once you have that adjusted, you press the adjust button, and then you can press the altimeter button and start it. So let's play this out so you can hear what it sounds like. Down to the last 10 seconds, there is no countdown beeps, and here it goes. And this will sound for 10 seconds, or you can press any button to stop it, like that. And then when you stop it, it resets to where the time you adjusted it from. Next mode from timer, pressing the mode button is alarm, ALM. And here there is five alarms, and I will show you using the altimeter button. So that was alarm one, and that's alarm two, alarm three, alarm four, and alarm five. And I'd just like to add that there isn't any snooze feature. And then pressing the altimeter again, you have the signal, the hourly signal alarm. To turn this on, you press the adjust button once and it indicates with an on and you have a little bell icon there. So let's give you a little example. If I select the alarm one, when I press the adjust here, just the once, I can turn it on and it will give you the little icon there for the alarm. But when it's off and when you go to adjust, it's just a long press and it would automatically turn the alarm on. So it'll come up with set and here you can adjust the hours. And again, you're using the compass and the altimeter button. And if you press the mode button, you can advance with the minutes like that up and down. And once it's set, you press the adjust and the alarm is set. Now there is an alarm test and it doesn't matter which alarm you are in or if you're in the signal, it's just a long press on the altimeter button and you get the sound like that. And that's what the alarm would sound like. Now when the alarm does go off, it will go off for 10 seconds. And again, you can just press any button to cancel it. And just to add that these alarms are daily alarms for 24 hours. And the next mode from alarm is the world time with WT. Now this holds in the watch 38 time zones. And as mentioned before, in the app, you can have 300 plus world times. So here you can use the altimeter and the compass button and advance. So here I'm going Eastly, and then I'm going Westly using the compass button. And you can do a long press and it will go through like so. And like in the adjustment menu, when I was in the main time, it scrolls the full name. It doesn't do the city codes. If you press the compass button and the altimeter button together, this will take you back to UTC time. So I find that very handy because all I've got to do is press the altimeter button straight to London. Now, just let me give you an example. I want to select Paris. There it is. And if I press the adjustment button with a long press, it comes up with set. And here I can adjust the daylight saving time. I can either have it on auto using the altimeter button. I can select off or can have it permanently on like so. And then pressing the adjust button once takes you out. Now, if you're not sure what the world time is, just press the adjust button very quickly and it will come up. And there you can see it's in Paris. Now, for an example, I jump on a plane, I now land in Paris 
you can actually do a time swap with your home time by pressing the backlight button. Watch this. With a long press, it comes up with HT swapping with world time. Then you can release and that will advance it one hour because that is the time difference. Now, if I press the adjustment button, you can see my world time is London and the main time is now on Paris. Now, I could swap this back by pressing the light button, but because I've got this connected to the app, I just want to show you what it's like. So now I take off from Paris, I land in London, my phone has now adjusted to London time, quick press on the connect, comes up with time, and then that will make a connection with my device. Once it's connected, it will make a connection with the second hand and then adjust the hour forward. Well, actually, it would adjust it backwards by one hour, but that just showed you how easy it was. Because I had the world time in Paris and now I've done the adjustment through that, when I press the adjustment, it is now turned back to London. So just have that to mind. And from world time, pressing the mode takes me back to the timekeeping mode. And that's all the modes in the watch. And now for the exciting part, I'm now going to be doing the connection via the Bluetooth. Now, if you buy this watch brand new, you probably don't need to do anything to it. You just connect straight to the app. But if you do buy this used or it has been used by someone else, then I would recommend to reset the Bluetooth. And to do this in home time, press the adjustment button and go into the part one of the adjustment then press the adjustment again, and then you have the flashing seconds. Now from here, you need to press the compass with a long press, keep it pressed, and it comes up with pair clear, and then it makes a chirp, and then release, and then you can press the adjustment. Now the Bluetooth has been reset. Now you need to get onto the App Store or the Google Play Store and download this one. You need the G-Shock Connected. Now there is some other ones, but that's the one you need. Then once it's downloaded, you open it and you'll have this screen here. So scroll down. It is the only Mudmaster on the list and open that. And then you'll have a nice drawing of the watch with some instructions to show you how to connect it. So basically you hold down the connect button for two seconds. So press the connect button for a few seconds. It comes up with up, makes a chirp. The second hand rotates and goes to R and it's now looking for ready. And then on the app, you'll have a prompt to register the watch. Now you only get a few moments to do this, so you gotta act quick, and now it's gonna make the connection. And once the connection is made, the second hand on the watch will go to C, like it's done there, and then on the device it's gone, registration was successful. Then you get a tutorial on the app, you can either skip this, or you can scroll through and just see what it's about. And the first thing you need to do is enter your units. So I've already done this in the watch. And once you are happy, you just press send to the watch and then please wait. And that doesn't take long at all. Now you need to put your profile in and here I'm going to do it with you. So you tap on the height and here, for those who didn't know how tall I am, I am this tall. I'm 194 centimeters. And when you're happy, you just press on to the next one, is the weight. Now, I have no shame in my weight. I am about 100 and a little bit further. I'm around about 120 kilos. Then you have your birthday. I'm gonna select here. And for those who've been watching my previous videos, no, it's on September, but you don't know how old I am. Hmm, I wonder if you can guess. Am I going too far back? Uh, <laughs> well, it's not 69, unfortunately, but it is 70. And then I select whether I'm male or female. And then next you have the target in steps. Now, I'm not really using this, but this is where you will uh, select. And look at that. You can go right up to 50,000 steps or down to 1,000. I think the average is a good, healthy 10,000. So once that is selected, you just touch the black part of the screen, and then you can send all that data to the watch. And then setting is complete. 
and then you're back to this starting screen here. At the bottom you have a little toolbar where you have guide, you have mission log, you have step counter, world time and then utility. So I just want to quickly show you one here, it's called guide and if you look here it says view guide. So if you tap on that you actually get to see what the buttons do and then you can look at some further information which I will go through and you have the first one which is the log data this is sort of basically tracking you via the app and here it tells you how to start the mission log and also how to stop the log and that's very useful and then you can press backwards up here and then you can go on to the next one which is registering the location this is two of the strengths of this watch and again it's showing you how to register using the location indicator but I will go through all this with you to make it very very easy and then you have some customs settings here but I shall show you another way to get there so just press in return back to this menu here I will come back to this screen here but I just want to show you the step tracker for those who are interested well I haven't worn the watch today but if I did it will have my steps here and there's my goal there and then it's listing your percentage here you have seven days here for the past seven days we are now on the 15th which will be here and then it carries over on there and then you can skip to today you can see that and then it will draw a graph like this and it shows you the uh, steps you've achieved and even calculates your calories and here you can advance with the date as well and go back and at the bottom you have a calendar here very useful so you can select whatever day and just sort of have a recap and uh, and when you're sort of maybe on your lazy days and that's the step counter from step counter is the world time and this is what it looks like there is my world time you can see when I press the connect it actually swapped it over so if you tap on there where it's red that's the only one you can adjust you get a map like that and then you can pinch to zoom and pinch out to have a look a little better look at the world map and you can see when you cover the time zones it changes the color like that so if I say wanted to go down to say Tokyo or to Japan there it is I'll just select Japan and then it comes up with the time it comes up with the date and here you can also adjust the daylight saving if you press that there is your options you can have auto on or off and then just press cancel like that and when you're ready you just press select or set to watch then you just have to wait a little bit it's sort of um, doing a little bit of animation here and then it will zoom over to Tokyo and then make the time adjustment and then return back to this screen here and you can swap from here by pressing the two little arrows in the middle it will now swap from London time to home time you can see it like that and then just press send to watch and then the watch will make the connection it comes up with OK every time it's a good connection it comes up with OK and now it's advancing now I can adjust this back even don't have to wait for it to stop there it is it's done that comes up see if I can beat it then press it now that's going to do the swap back so you don't have to wait for anything to stop you can just continually flow with the uh, with the adjustment side and that's one thing that I really like very much indeed you can also save up to six favorites so to hold those in position you can just tap on the stars and then tap on again to release them and then the next function is the utility in here you have all your alarms the five alarms which you can adjust you can even turn on and off the signal and you can adjust the timer so if I went to alarm like that you go at the top you press on and then you can fiddle around with the time there and once you're happy you just press send to watch like that then it comes up with a little window there saying setting is complete and just press OK and if I go back to the list you can see where the alarm is switched on 
it actually shows the time. And you can do this for the signal as well, and you can turn the signal on or off from there. And then after signal, you have the timer. And note that because I adjusted it to one minute on the watch and now it's connected, it's now seen that as one minute. So it's already there for you. So that's quite cool, isn't it? And if, as soon as you start adjusting, you will have the send to watch setting at the bottom there. And if you don't adjust anything, it won't amend the timer. Now it doesn't matter what menu you are in. If you go to the very top, there will be a star icon. Now, if you tap on that, that is settings. Then you select the watch right there, and then you'll have some adjustments you can do in the app or actually on the watch. And at the top here, you can tap on that and actually rename this. So I can actually go back and call it the name it deserves, which is the Mud Master. I've actually got it rewritten there. And then once you're happy, you have a little arrow there and you can just press select like that. And now it's listed as the Mud Master. Then you have the app side. So the tutorial you saw at the beginning, activity map display settings. This is basically if you want to show the mapping using your data connection here is where you can turn it off. So if you're a bit limited on data, maybe you don't want the maps to keep loading. Then it has find phone feature. Find my phone. If you lost your phone, well, <laughs> maybe you should get a strap for it and have it on your wrist. But here you can make adjustments. You can select one of the pre-installed uh, music things they have in there, the sounds, or you can choose your own up there. And I will do a little tutorial on that in a moment. And here you can bypass the volume on the actual device. So if you have it on mute here, it will override that. How to use Find My Phone. And you don't need your device switched on. It can be in standby. So it's just a long press on connect and it comes up with app, keep pressing, and then it comes up with find. And now release and wait for the music. and press any button to stop it. Then you have the operating of auto time adjustment function. God, it's quite wordy, isn't it? So basically the app will notify you when it's done a time adjustment. And here it will notify me once a week. Well, if you want this on or off, here is where you come. And then you have some more uh, sort of little adjustments here or well, gives you sort of information which will take you out and take you to the website. But I'm sure with some planning around, you can understand and figure this all out yourself. Next is the watch side. And here you have your profile settings, which you've already seen, you've already done that. Let's put all my weight and height and things in. And then you have your units, which uh, again, we've done and already passed to the watch. Before I tap on this, I would recommend you go to the toilet and um, really make sure you are empty because this is gonna make you so excited. I don't want you to pee yourself. So you ready for this? Let's go in, open it up and you have this here. Now there's two options, you have mode and display. So uh, let's just go through the mode first. So these are all the modes you have in the watch and you have these toggle buttons here. So what do you think you can do here? Well, you can actually customize it and turn on which modes you would like. So if you just want the barometer, temperature, and the timer, there it is, but it goes further. You see these little lines on this side here, if you tap on that, it goes black, and then you can adjust it to the order you like, like that. Say if I just wanted, I can turn that off there, the temperature. Say I just wanted timer and the barometer, I can now transfer that to the watch. And then it's gonna come up with a little prompt just to say that if you have the alarm set, it may not go off. And then you've got setting complete and then it's done. Let's have a look at the watch and show you what it looks like. So to exit from the connection, you can press pretty much any button. In this case, I'm just gonna press the mode button. Now I'm in home time. Now, if I go through the modes, watch this. First mode is now timer. Second mode is barometer. Pressing again, goes back to time. And just to show you that you can do the reset to default. So if you tap on that, it turns everything back on and then you can just send that straight to the watch. And now for the display side, 
and look at these options. Now, you remember when I opened the display in the home time, I was showing the day date, barometer with the date, the home time with the seconds, and then you had the step counter. Well, you can add to this. You can add the date with the year. You can have the full graph with the barometer. You can have the world time and you can have the sunset and sunrise. And in the world time, it would only show the world time you have selected. Say, for instance, I want to show that. I don't really want the steps. I don't, do I need the time? Maybe I don't need the time. Maybe I like the date and the barometer graph there on full. Then when I'm ready, I go down to here and adjust that to the watch. So let's have a look and see what it looks like. Now in home time, pressing the display button from the date, I now have the full barometer pressure gauge up to 56 hours worth. Wow. Now I have sunrise and sunset. Pressing again takes me back to the date. Then next is the watch display settings. Here you can change either the 24 hours to 12 hours. You can change the difference on the second hand say in the barometer if you want the second shown or if you want the pressure to be shown then next is set the operation sound here you can choose whether you want it on or in mute next one is set the time for connecting to the app and so when the watch is connected do you want it to last three minutes five minutes or ten minutes just to let you know when it's in three minutes if you're scrolling around it will stay connected it's basically when you put the phone down and do nothing it would automatically disconnect to that way next is the time adjustment and here you can choose to have it adjusted up to four times a day well because i'm in the app quite often I don't really need this, so I would select that as off, but it's your choice. Next is the light setting. Here you can choose the auto light or you can choose the duration between one and a half seconds and three seconds. Then you can even adjust the interval on the altitude here. Remember I had the selection of either one hour or 12 hours, depending how accurate you want it. Next is the heading setting here. And it's set on factory as auto correction and anything that's auto, I think I'm going to leave. Then you've got method of calculating calories and this is all to do with the slope. Remember you saw that in the adjustment and this will be using your altitude using the air pressure. Then you've got adjusting home positions. This is basically calibrating the hands like I did in the watch, but this is via the app. So basically you just tap on the hand one there and then it comes up like this with the arrows and you can adjust the minute hand to suit. And of course that would adjust the hour hand as well. And the last one is the summertime. There is my home time London and here you can adjust the daylight savings from here. So pretty much you can adjust everything from the app. Last is this window here and this is where the watch really comes alive because you have the location function and then you have this log information as well. And also you have something in the middle here. And um, I'm just gonna touch briefly on this because I know maybe some of you are sort of wondering what and how this works. And because this can use auto correction for the altimeter side, some are thinking that this is going to automatically correct the watch. It's not how it works. So basically you adjust the altitude on your watch, making sure that that is correct. And the adjustments will be made via the app using your location. And this will only be seen when you transfer the data or once the data is saved and it's in your activity side. I will go through this so it makes it a bit more understandable through the later tutorial, but it's not about setting the altimeter to the actual device, just to let you know. And you do have the option if you want this correction in the, from the app or if you just want to let it go naturally through the air sensor. You also have the option here, you can tap on here and enter the digits as well for your altimeter. But note, once this is adjusted, it won't make any automatic adjustments for the next 12 hours. I hope you're sort of understanding this because it is sort of kind of confusing, but once I start running it 
and you see how it's working, then it will all make sense. Before I go outside, I just want to quickly address the location finder and the log data in the light box so uh, you don't get disturbed with the sort of noise outside. So long as you have the phone connected and the app is open, you can have the phone in sleep mode. It will all work as long as it's within a good range in your pocket. So you're at your location and you want to record it so you can come back to it later. So it is a long press on the compass button and I mean it is a long press. So you hold it in, ignore that, keep it holding and it will come up with memory like that and it makes a double chirp. Now it goes to ready with the second hand and that's flashing. So all that's doing now is making a connection with the device just to basically trigger where your location is and then it comes up to OK and then it goes back to the compass and then you can just press the mode to exit. Now I have that in the memory. So let's have a look at the device and see what's saved. And now you can see the location finder actually does have some coordinates. So if I open that, it will come up with a map of my location. It also come up with the date and time and it will come up with this format here. And I've been playing with it and you can't change the format as you would have on Google. So Casio, are you listening? Have this address because you can change it on the arrangement. That's my location for now. But when I go outside to do the tutorial, I will reset this so I can show you how it works. So I've set my location point. I go for a little wonder and now I want to return. How do I use it? Again, you don't need to turn the device on as long as it's on the connected app is on and you have allowed for all the location and all the connectivity. I have it in this case as always on. So you press the compass with a little press here and you wait for that where it comes up with indicate, waiting for the second hand to go ready. Now that's going to communicate with your device, making sure that you are within a good distance. And then once you've got the connection, it will go to C with the second hand. There it goes with OK. And then the second hand will now become your pointer. And it's basically what you're trying to do is get the second hand to be at the 12. And because I'm in my light box, it's a bit of a struggle. And also you have some icons here to be shown. So in the light box, I can't show you this, but when I go outside, I'm gonna show you how this works. It is brilliant. But basically you get a little arrow here once you're sort of a certain distance with the meters, it's always in meters, and it will register from zero all the way up to 99 million miles, no, up to 99, up to roughly about 100,000 miles, I think. So it'll measure up to 99,999 meters, if that's not enough. It's just a fancy track back, really, and uh, it only stores one location at a time on the app. Now it refreshes every 10 seconds and this will last for three minutes and then it goes back into compass mode. Now if you want to refresh it just press the connect button just the once and it comes up with try. Now this takes a couple of seconds sometimes you'll get a fail. It's because you're not in range of the device or for some reason maybe you're receiving a message and it just doesn't receive it at the same time. There's a sort of a bit of a crossover. That's through my experience, and there you go. Just try again, and now I've made a connection. So now I get another three minutes on top. So it's like that, and then you can just come out of that by pressing the mode, goes back to the compass, press the mode button, it goes back into home time. And then just to start it, it's just a matter of pressing that for the few seconds and off you go again. Now for one of the other main features, and this is to do with the mission log. So basically the watch is like a trigger. It's activating the app and then telling it to start logging or start tracking you. 
and uh, this will record the information also in the watch. I'm not exactly how it all works internally, but it says it records up to 60 logs in the watch. And if you record the 61st log, then the oldest will get replaced. Now it will run for 12 hours and it will take an auto transfer every hour. And uh, I think when it gets to 30 logs, it will transfer the data. Now I'm just gonna give you a little demonstration in the light box. Obviously I'm not gonna be able to walk too far in my light box, but it just gives you an idea. So when I'm showing you outside, you're sort of piecing it together better. So in home time, what you can do is start the altimeter with a little press and calibrate the altitude like so, and then you can just pop back out again. So you know that's all calibrated. So now to start it, to start the log, it's a long, long press. At the beginning, it's gonna take a record, which will be stored in the watch and also will be transferred later into the app. So let's just show you so you can see what's actually going on. So it comes up with record, keep the finger pressed in, and then it comes up with log, makes another chirp. Now the hand is registering, and then once it says okay, then at the top here, it will come up with the icon log. Now it just takes about 20 seconds. Let me just shift those hands out of the way. So I've got the log running, I've got the barometer on, I've got the hands in place, and I've even got the indicator running. I mean, how many other G-Shock can multitask on that level? Okay, I'm just gonna connect to the app and just give it a few seconds like that with the app and make the connection. And I'm gonna show you what's actually happening in the app. Now I can go to all activity for some reason it does this thing and what it's doing is still measuring because it's still running and also this is a good indication that if you do forget to turn off the log at least when you come in you can see ah measuring it's still going and uh, notice that it's now got the point here and I'm going to show you something very very cool so let's go back to the watch now if I go into the altimeter and take a recording like that it will now register automatically to the app and then once it goes to C, it's made the connection. So you just need to observe this to make sure that you do get that connection. Because sometimes, again, if you've got some messages coming in, you might not get it all. So let's just readjust those hands. Now that is now registered. So what I can do now, straight from there, there's no messing about with this watch. You don't have to keep going back to home time. I now can connect straight to the app. And this is the thing I really, really do like this because on uh, some G-Shocks, you have to always return back to the uh, main time before you can actually do anything. And this seems to be really zippy as well. Very, very zappy. I wonder if it's because it's not solar power and it has a bigger engine power, bigger battery. So now if I go to all activity there, and it's still measuring, at the top there you can see it's got point. Now that's registered with a flag. Now that is classed as a waypoint. Brilliant, isn't it? Anyway, I wanna show you one, 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 one more thing as well, because I need to show you how to turn this off as well. So let's just connect, disconnect from that. So to turn it off, it's a long, long press on the altimeter. It will take a final recording as well, because it does stamp those, and then it comes up with log off. Now this does take uh, around about sort of 10, maybe 20 seconds, and it's just sort of finalizing and uh, signing off basically with the app on the uh, phone. That's probably about 30 seconds, then it goes to okay, and then log comes off and then we're disconnected. So I wanna show you something else as well. So I'm in the altimeter, I haven't got the log running. Now I just wanna take a recording like that. And then maybe just a, another one a bit further down the sort of the altitude. So we have that. And now I can go back into the connection and I wanna show you something really, really good now. So I make the connection and then when that's connected, we'll go to the app. I don't need to say that. I can edit that bit and go straight to the app. So now I've connected back into the app, go to all activity. Now you see the measuring is now gone 
and that is the point there you can see and you can just open that up and it will give you your altitude reading where <laughs> it's gone a bit crazy there is it because it's used the auto correction in the app so that shows you that's working and then you've got your point there your start your goal and this is where I took a record this is member for the flag so this is your waypoint as well and uh, let's come back out of that and let me show you the point here now it's registered twice you remember when the log was running it was making it as a waypoint and now because it's just in the watch it's not having a flag so if it hasn't got the flag you know that is from the data from the watch and it even transfers it to the app how cool is that you really cannot go why don't you want one of these you really do need to get one of these so i found a really nice location here in this open field i know it's not very big but uh, it's going to give you an idea of what this mudmaster can do and i've signed the goal and start with this ribbon first thing you need to do is make sure you have the app fully open so meaning that it's always on and it's sharing the location now the phone is in my pocket and it's on standby just to give you an idea I'm going to do the location and I'm also going to do the log so the location is basically like a track back and the log is a track me and it's just very clever how the watch communicates with the device and uh, it's the device that's actually recording all the data I'm going to begin with setting a location and uh, it's a long press on the compass there keep it pressed and it's got indicates and it comes up with memory you wait for a beep and then release the second hand is now registering with the device and once that has taken a coordinate or my location then it goes to OK and that's with my phone in my pocket and now I can exit and go back to home time next you need to calibrate the altimeter and here on this app it's showing 70 meters on my Phoenix 6 Pro it's showing 73 meters and on my rangeman it's showing 71 meters and that's using the GPS now I need to calibrate the altimeter on the Mudmaster so open the altimeter and then long press on adjust comes up with set and now I can adjust that to the true value and you can see that's 132 so well out so let's take that down I'm going to choose 75 because that's about the average from my readings from the rangeman the phoenix and the app and just want to set that make sure that is on the 12 hours because I might be more than one hour I'm also going to reset the difference there using the light button so it's all calibrated next I'm going to go into the modes and I want record here and I'm going to reset all these so long press on clear keep it held and it comes up with all clear and then return back to home time I'm now ready to begin the log data so it's a long press on the altimeter and it will make a recording and then it comes up with log wait for that other double beep and now it's registering and it does the record at the beginning and this is pretty much like a waypoint I'll say the phone is in my pocket still it's not on and this usually takes about 20 seconds to well 20 seconds about that time now it's come up with log on I have log on the display and now I'm ready to go so now I can just exit that and go back to timekeeping mode so now let's go for a little wonder today we have horses and cows mixing you're gonna come and say hello to me should I give you a little bit of horse whispering Ah, oh, you are lovely. Hello, you. Again? No, it's a different one. You gonna come and say hello? You know you do. Oh, no, you don't. I've now reached my furthest point, and the ribbon is where those trees are. Okay, let's test out the location finder. So it's just a press on the compass till indicate comes on. It makes a beep then it's going to make a register again the phone is in my pocket and there it's come up with OK you have to make sure that the watch is level now that is 
perfectly aligned and pointing straight to where the ribbon is. Now, you see this little icon there, you can see that it is in a positive and when I rotate it, it goes negative and that's to indicate that you're off course. Look at that, and so it goes like that. And when you're within 80 meters, that arrow will turn to a G. And while here, I'm gonna take a point memo, so it's a long press on the altimeter, comes up with the cord, and then release. And you see the second hand goes to register, and then it will go to OK, and that will log it on the phone. And that's recorded. Now, I would recommend to do this when you're stationary. And there is also the difference. I'm now at 57 meters, and you can see the difference indicator has dropped by two. And the Rangeman is on 53 meters, and the Phoenix is on 58. And while in home time, if I press the altimeter button, long press, I can make another recording. And OK. And I'm at an altitude of 67 meters or 68. And the rangeman on the GPS is 65. Phoenix is on 68. OK, let's have a look at the memory side. So let's look at the indicator. Makes a beep. Making the connection. So, uh, oh, failed. I discovered that it was my camera that was actually interfering and causing it to fail. So here we go again. I'm now gonna point that to the ribbon and there, perfect. And you can also do a refresh by pressing the connect button just the once. It comes up with try and this is gonna refresh it for another three minutes. And I don't need to keep this running because I know where I need to head. I can come out and go into home time. I also like to add that you can take photos in your phone and this will upload it to the app and position exactly where you took that picture. And there are the pictures stored for this location. Move. So let's see how far I am from the ribbon. So pressing the compass, get the indicator to go. And uh, I should be within 80 meters, so it should show the G. And there's the OK. And there, you can see the G, I'm 39 meters away. And I need to take that away from the camera, otherwise it gets interfered. And that is absolutely perfect there. I've noticed that if I rotate, the G doesn't go into a negative, it remains in a positive. Well, in 39 meters, I should be able to see my target. I do apologize if there's any wind, I am wearing my little dead cat. So I'm at the ribbon, so let's see out of interest how accurate this is. A bit nervous. And okay. And I'm within nine meters. And just to prove that, there it is. That is brilliant, really impressed with that. And now I can go back into the home time. Can also just go into the altimeter, just check that, 73 meters. The rangeman is showing us 69 meters. Well, that is gonna make a screenshot, isn't it? And so to stop this, it's a long press on the altimeter button. It will take a final recording and then it will log off and then you can release. Now, I don't know what it's actually doing, but it's gonna be telling the device to uh, turn off. I'm sure of it. and now it's logged off. So next, let's get into the light box and it's all still covered in mud, but I did clean the crystal. Let's have a look in the all activity side. Up the top here, open that and look what I've done. I've drawn a G for G-Shock and this part here, I had to walk around some cows. Anyway, you get the altitude difference here and there is the lowest and then the highest there. And then that's when I started. 
and I took a photo so let's just tap on that and that's what I took some cows in the field and that is a waypoint and there's the second waypoint and third waypoint and then I took a couple more photos and then goal at the end. Total distance is 1.6 kilometers, total time is 42 minutes. I know it's a long time but I had to do the filming and I had to create this G genius. And where it says title you just tap on that keyboard comes up and then you can choose what you like. Back in the activity list you have point up here so just open that up and there are the three points and because I took them while it was in log it will mark it with this flag so basically it's like a waypoint and if I just open up one for an example you can change the title if you want there's the date you have the time you have your coordinate altitude there and you can tap on memo here and give it a little bit of whatever you need and just to show you the location point there there it is in the field I also did a track me with the rangeman and let's have a look at the activity there and again look it's imported the photos and there is the G drawing there, look at that. Now if you liked this, maybe you should watch my Etch-a-Sketch video with the Rangeman, where I drew something a bit more complicated than this. And look at the altimeter side, it's showing more details. And this was using the GPS in the Rangeman. There is a 3D map there, so let's give that a go. And I used the Phoenix as well, so here is the total distance of 1.58 time at 50.9 seconds and I burned 124 calories and there is the map so on the watch I want to show you what the record looks like so this is the first recording I did and this is where I started the log at 76 meters you can press the adjust button just to show you that that is position one then using the altimeter I can forward this position two that was the lowest point at 58 meters there it goes thank you second hand just waiting for that there it goes 58 then the next point that was in the middle I think that was about 60 67 that's it 67 and then the last point that's when I logged off and that should be back up to 70 there we go 73 perfect then moving on you have a maximum so let's see what the maximum was should be at 70 yeah 77 then the minimum that would be interesting where it was and uh, I did go into a little dip there we go 55 that's pretty good I'm happy with that sending going up that's 15 meters and then descending going downhill I did a total of 18 meters difference now my conclusion I have to say I am very very impressed with this Mudmaster and uh, it will be replacing a few other G-Shocks in my collection now would it replace the GW9400 hmm. and for those who are interested just going through the display here I'm sure you want to know my steps 3345 there is a factory reset and I would probably recommend to do this especially if you buy this watch on the secondary market so from home time you press the adjustment button and hit the adjustment the first adjustment and then press the adjustment button for the second time and now you have the flash in seconds now it's a very long press of five seconds on the compass button so you keep it pressed pair clear and then it comes up with reset and now everything has been restored to factory settings I hope you found this tutorial useful and as always that is the time from this amazing mudmaster thanks for watching <laughs>